good morning again. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? I am truly blessed to be here, and I trust that you are too. And uh, if you turn your attention unto the Lord and let him speak to you, I'm sure that he has a special message for you this day. Amen. Now, as we take the time to turn off your phones and turn on your thinking cabinets and be ready, uh, let the music that Edna plays uh, touch your heart and prepare you to receive for all that God has for you this morning. Amen. God bless. Bring it in. 
next week for the last week, okay? God bless you all. Um, we have prayer meeting tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. It is done by conference calling, so if you want to be a part of it, just let Pastor know and we'll add your phone number and bring you in. We have had a blessed time. I mean, the Lord just comes down with his presence and blesses us and, you know, it's just wonderful. Um, I don't know if you all remember uh, Terry Vogel, but uh, she's been praying with us for quite a while and uh, it's been a real blessing. So we get to find out how her mom's doing and her mom is doing very well. So praise God for that. I think she's 97 years young. <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, and then we have our Sunday service next Sunday, 10 o'clock. Come on out. Praise the Lord. Give him praise and honor. Uh, he is worthy. He's the one that's keeping us all here. Oh, Lord. Um, if you need any more um, information, if you need to get a COVID test, there are free, it's free testing all around. So just wanted to let you know that Pastor and I about a month ago had, had one just to make sure. And uh, we were fine, thank God. But um, it's a process, but it is free. You just have to give me your, your information. So, no big deal. All right? So, God bless you. Anything else, Pastor? Okay. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. We'll take the opportunity to uh, sing a hymn together. So, if you take your paper. We're going to do 309. 309. She's very comfortable. She's not in any pain, and she's very grateful for that. And she would like to 
thank people for their prayers. Amen. Please keep them going. Keep them going. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Um, Linda Boy, who sits here and broke her kneecap um, because she slipped on a wet floor in the shopping shop. Um, <clears throat> she just found out she does not need surgery on her knees. So Amen. She's very blessed by that. She has to wear one of those blue things, you know, for about six weeks. The pain in the neck, but it doesn't have to so. Amen. Ever had that injection into his eye? He says it's the best it's ever been. That uh, no problem. It went very, very well. So, uh, and his head is the stitches are, are uh, from that other little accident he had, or is healing up. So, praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Uh, Alicia, the little girl with cancer. They finally said that her last chemotherapy uh, will be, I believe, November thirtieth. So the end of the month, she should be done and hopefully cancer free. So praise God. We'll continue to pray for her and her family uh, as they go through that process. Amen. Anybody else have a testimony or what God's done for you? Anything? Yes. Well, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for my son Justin and his friend who came by yesterday and who all are <laughs> which is awesome. You know how many trees we have. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's Amen. A big job, so. Amen. Any particular prayer requests? I know we have a couple of families who have lost loved ones. There's been some funerals that. have a friend of mine whose uh, wife is coming to an end. She has a debilitating muscular disease like Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, she's continued losing her ability to have muscle uh, and uh, it's getting near the end. So pray for, for her to just be able to have peace and for him to be able to let her go. So uh, it's a difficult situation. Amen. Anybody else? I saw a hand. Did you get something else? No, that's what, that's what you're going to mention? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Yes? Uh, Ellen, Janet, and Tammy, <laughs> and Nancy Percy took a bad call about three weeks ago, and she just... So, was she in the hospital? Well, it was odd, but she kept her home, but uh, we heard her back right back. Amen. Amen. Okay, yes. Uh, my granddaughter will be coming home next Saturday. She's going to finish the first semester. Amen. 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 Praise God. Anything else? Yes, Victor. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for this sanctuary. I love my brother so much. He was a liberation house in Stanford. I was there as an outpatient. And my brother prayed. When he gets angry, he stares me. But he broke the edge. He called me. I sent him fifty dollars in the mail. With my copy of my birth certificate, and nobody would. Amen. We'll continue to pray for Freddie. Hey, yes, I love Freddie so much. Amen. Amen. He's Amen. awesome. Amen. They're both handsome. Amen. <laughs> yes. Those are battling mental health issues. Mental health issues, Amen. true. Amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, you are worthy of praise. Lord, we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We give you praise, we give you honor for who you are. 
and we look to, for your kingdom to come, for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray to give us this day our daily bread. We know that you are the provider of all things. You are Jehovah Jireh. And Lord God, we thank you that you have also told us to forgive those who sin against us, trespass against us. Lord God, that we would be forgiven. We thank you, Lord God, that we would be able to give you the honor and the glory and the praise both now and forever. We thank you that we are able to come before your throne and that we are able to pray for these who are sick, those who are in need of healing, those who are in need of comfort, those who are going through the, the end part of their life, Lord God. Lord, we pray for your comfort, your mercy, and your grace. We pray for those who are battling mental illness, those who are battling addiction. Lord, when a, a family member has a problem, Lord God, we continue to pray for them. Yes. In spite you. of it, Lord God. So for Freddie, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are able. You are able to, to keep and to deliver. We pray for our friends. We pray for uh, all those who are in need, Lord God, that we have caregivers that are, are giving people uh, the, the support that they need. And Nancy, Lord, as she is okay but is in pain, Lord God, we pray that you minister to her and for Deb, who's taking care of her, Lord God. Minister, Lord God, to those who are in need, but also to the caregivers, Lord God. Lord, we pray for this craziness that we have in our country, Amen. in the politics and the disease, and the uh, hurricanes and the fires, and all the different things that are going on. It so easily is to beset us and help us to just fall down, but that's a lie from the pit of hell. For Lord God, we know that you are still on the throne. And Lord, in spite of all the things that happen around us, Lord God, that we can depend upon you, that we can turn our attention to you, that you continue to love us, minister to us, and minister through us to the needs of others. So Lord God, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, God is so good. We take a look at the fact that, you know, every time we, we have a problem, we, we go to him and you know, it's just an amazing thing that, you know, I thank the Lord that he doesn't get tired of hearing from me. Amen. And that we can continue to go back to him. And uh, with situations that, uh, you know, I don't know how it is around your house, but if you lose something, all right, uh, where did I put those keys? Where, where you know, what what's going on? And, 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 and we, uh, we cry out to God. We have things that we have a, a hurt or a pain uh, that we just don't know where it's coming from and, and we just cry out to God. And God is so good. I don't know. You know, you pull a muscle and oh, it hurts to move so you, you don't move and then it gets stiff and then he say, well, I should get up and move around. We have all of these different things that are going on and yet he is the one who hears and he is the one who ministers to us. And he is the one that forgives us, and even when we are complaining too much. You know, me complain? Yeah, I, I do. And I thank God for my wife sometimes that she puts up with it. I mean, when we have people in our lives, you know, that, uh, that do that, you know, it's a wondrous, wondrous thing. You know, when we have family members around us, and we are supporting each other. You know, my daughter is in town. She now has three kids, you know? And sometimes I don't know how we got through it with our six kids. My wife said it was it was just a blur, you know? It's, but, you know, sometimes you just need to vent, oh, so crazy. Yeah. But thank God that we are there and that we can understand what people are going through. My message for you today, if you take your Bibles, please open up your Bibles. Those of you who are at home can open up your Bibles. And those of you who don't have Bibles, you can probably find it on your phone and find a, an app that uh, gives you the, the scripture. We are in Matthew chapter 18. 
Matthew chapter 18. And I would like to just give you, uh, we're going to not start in the beginning of the chapter, we're going to start all the way over on chapter 18, verse 21. But in the beginning of this chapter, it's talking about the times, it's talking about the kingdom of God, and the disciples are asking, you know, who is the greatest of these? And he kind of puts them in their place by saying, look at this little child. If we don't come to the Lord as a little child, you know, we are really a problem. And that we shouldn't be a stumbling block to any of these little ones. Woe unto them, it goes on. He goes on and, and, and talks about the 90 and 9. And that the shepherd goes out and, and he gets the one that is lost. He continues to go on once they, they start Jesus talking. You know, he continues to speak to them. And he links it together. And it comes to the place of, of discipline within the church. And about sin. And uh, saying that if your brother sins against you, go to them privately and, and speak to them. And then if there's two or three, and et cetera, et cetera. And it talks about the fact of going and speaking to one another. Oh, about yeah. sins that we're sinned against. But it really comes to the point, and this is where I want to start, in verse 21. Okay? Chapter 18, verse 21. And Peter came and said to him, to Jesus, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? And Jesus says unto him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. So we're going to start right there with, with that verse. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, speak to our hearts this day that we might be able to receive the individual message that you have for each one of us. Speak through your Holy Spirit that we would be encouraged, that we would be strengthened, that we would be directed, and that we would learn what you have for us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm not too much with this new math stuff. I'm kind of an old school type of guy that does math, you know, so I just kind of look at it and, and, and do it the old, old school way. But sometimes, you know, parents have a tough time helping their kids with problems. Well, this father came into the, to the room and his daughter was in second grade. And he looked down there at the paper and he saw at the top of the paper, it said 70 times 7 minus 34. And he thought, wow, that's a, a pretty complex mathematical problem for a second grader. And said, hey, honey, uh, I see that problem you have for math, and it looks pretty complex and pretty hard for you, if, you know, only in second grade. Is that part of your math homework? And she looks up and says, Dad, of course not. Of course not. Well, well then what is it? He says, it's the number of times that I still have to forgive my dumb brother. Whoa. Somebody is keeping track. 70 times 7. She doesn't know even how to do the multiplication table probably, but she knows that's the number of times that I need to forgive my brother. And 34 times I've already forgiven him. So I'm counting. Well, you know what? Ours is not to keep a notebook. Ours is not to go, well, okay, you have this number. Okay, I'll pull out my notebook. <coughs> Get my pen and mark it down. Okay, that's uh, John's 37th time I've forgiven you. Oh, and Betty, oh, she's up to 37 also. <laughs> Charlie, he's up to 63. Wow. But God doesn't want us to keep track. It's not about keeping track. 
It's about understanding the wonderful grace of Jesus. Now, I've been preaching about different things, and I pro uh, promise you that this seems to me to kind of all go together. That God is speaking to our hearts yet again about what we should be doing with what we have received. Now, i got to say that one again. What we are doing with what we have received. What have you received from God? Well, you already heard a little bit in the, in the Lord's Prayer. We, we learn to forgive as we are forgiven. You know, forgive as we are forgiven. Okay. It means that we, we put aside all that Old Testament stuff of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and, and getting back at people. You know, okay. But all along the way, we see that God continues to say that we should pray for those who despitefully use us. In the Beatitudes, in the beginning of in, in Matthew, it talks about, you know, blessed are those. You know, when we are persecuted for Christ's sake and we can still forgive, we are going to be blessed. God is calling upon us to reflect back on what he's done for us. And what he has done for us, he can do for others. Are you prepared to give such forgiveness that you have received? I've said it so many times that I think you guys get tired of hearing me. That Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do when he was on the cross. Jesus also said to his disciples as he was preparing to leave that they should love one another as he has loved them. Now some people have, have broken that down as well. When Jesus said that, he was talking about the church, within the church. Yeah, I believe that that's true. That he was calling that tight-knit group together to say, love one another as I have loved you. But he also said it in a far surpassing way that he knew that if he had them loving each other, that they would remember that he loved even those who despitefully used him, those who persecuted him, those who took him to the cross, those who, who killed him on the cross. You see, we need to know what God has done for us. As we take a look at this, I want you to go on and take a look at the scriptures now. Some of the things that we have already been taught. Jesus says, let me explain it to you this way. In verse 23. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his slaves. And when he had begun to settle them, one of them owed him 10,000 talents and was brought to him. Now, I don't know if you guys understand how much money that is, but it is a large sum of money. A talent was usually a weighted measure of silver, but it was also, a talent was thought to be about what somebody would earn in a lifetime. Some people have done the math and multiplied it out and one talent would be somewhere around $500 million. Okay, let's say that it's a little bit off, but even if it was a million dollars, even if it was just one, this guy owed him 10 talents, 10 lifetimes worth of earnings, all at one time. He says, okay, your debt is going to be called on right now. Uh, give me what you owe me. Well, the servant couldn't, so what's it say? But since he had no means to repay, his master commanded that he would be sold and his wife and children and all that he had to repay his debt. For the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. Give me some time. And it says that the king had mercy upon him. And the master of the slave felt compassion. And he released him and forgave him of his debt. Whoa. 
Can you imagine calling the bank and saying, hey, uh, I'm a little short this month for my mortgage. And I know I didn't pay it last month either. You're talking about foreclosing on me. They said, ah, don't worry about it. It's forgiven. Done. Could you imagine that? How would you respond? I don't be dancing in the streets. That you were forgiven like that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But this is even bigger than that. That his servant, who was forgiven this large debt, went out. Now look what it says after this. Verse 28. But the slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii which is a small amount. And he seized him and began to choke him, saying, pay back what you owe. But his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, have patience with me, and I will repay you. But he was unwilling and threw him into prison until he should pay back what he owed. So when the fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported it to the master for what had happened. And then, summoning him, his master told him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Shall you not have mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his master removed, it was moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay what he owed. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if you each, well, if each of you do not forgive his brother from your, your heart with your heart. Are we ready to forgive as much as we have been forgiven? God, forgive me, I'm not really good at reading scripture, so you can reread it yourself with a little more eloquence. I want you to look at the fact of what we have been taught all along the way. Again and again and again, Jesus speaks to his disciples and tells them about how they are forgiven and how they should have a, a, a understanding of who God is. The prodigal son is another great example. The prodigal son came back to his father after he came to his senses, after he had spent everything he needed to repent. And he says, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I'm not worthy to be called even one of your hired help. But please, just hire me back. And the father did what? He threw his arms around him. He kissed him. He says, put a robe on him. Put a ring on his finger. You see, we need to know that when people repent and come back, God is able to bring us through any of these situations. What we have received, are we ready to give? I think sometimes we forget how much we have been given. Sometimes we forget how truly, truly blessed we are. We have a tendency to want to, anger just catches up with us. Oh, well, I really didn't mean to get that angry. Oh, well, we don't count our blessings. We don't get up in the morning and say, hey, thank you, Lord, and I, I'm still breathing. Praise God. Lord, thank you that I'm still able to get up. Thank you, Lord, that I'm able to recognize that this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. You see, there is a message that we need to receive. And remember, you know, it is something that we need to pray. Are you ready to pray for your enemies? Are you ready to pray for those people who are in need? You know, there are so many times in the recent uh, weeks that I've had a, a burden about looking at other people's problems. This one, that one, another one. As these things come around, you know, and God finally says to me, he says, hey, those are my burdens. I'm glad that you have a burden 
to do this or this or this, but give it to me. You know, I used to love that my dad's old church over at, at uh, First Methodist over there on West Avenue. One of the best parts about it was the communion rail. It arched around the whole thing in the front. Not the, for the fact that you could come up and kneel and, and have communion. That was, that was wonderful. But the thing that you could come up and take time to be before the Lord. You could kneel there and just feel that you're in the presence of God. Sometimes we need to do that. We need to be in the presence of God and we need to take our burdens before Him and leave them at the foot of the cross. We don't need to pick them up and take them with us as we go back out the door. Is there someone in your life who has offended you? I know I've used this illustration, but uh, the older old lady who was speaking to a pastor and says, so is there anybody that you really can't forgive? She goes, yes. My mother-in-law, I will never forgive her. She is just the worst person. She was horrible to me all through this. And it, he goes, well, I think you really need to go to her and ask her to know that you forgive her. He says, well, I can't. She's been dead for 20 years. You see, we hold grudges even when somebody's dead. We can't let go of some of these things. We do not forgive because we think that it's going to make a difference. We need to take it to God. There was a song that was popular. It says, he paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. But now I sing a brand new song. It's amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. You see, we need to be able to sing that song of amazing grace. We need to know that we can forgive. Take a look at the world around us today. There are so many people who have an ought with somebody and they're not ready to forgive anybody for anything. I'm going to be mad at them and they can just... Really? Who do you think that hurts? Who do you think that is that is really going to have a problem who is it that's going to turn things around? You need to take a look at this message that God has given you today to see how great the king forgave. Jesus Christ came to pay our debt on the cross. Jesus Christ came that we might be able to be forgiven of these things. He sums it up in this way. Now we take a look at this I want you to turn back with me now in Matthew to chapter 5. Starting with verse 43. Matthew chapter 5, starting with verse 43. He says, You have heard it said that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you in order that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love because those who love you, what reward have you? Do not you have the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brother only, what do you do more than others? Do not even Gentiles do the same? Therefore, I love that fact, therefore, then let's get understanding here. You are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Whoa. We are called to be perfect. We are called to be perfect because of our heavenly Father. 
We are supposed to be in the image of our Heavenly Father. We need to be able to forgive because it's not about me. It's about what He has done. What have you received and what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? A very famous woman, and maybe again I'm showing my age, her name was Corey Tenboom. She was a lady who wrote The Hiding Place. The family hid Jews during uh, World War II as all the Jews were being arrested and sent to prison camps and being exterminated. Her family was hiding them. She said about forgiveness, forgiveness is an act of will and the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Now I read that quote, I don't feel like forgiving. My heart doesn't want to forgive. But she said, forgiveness is an act of the will. I will because what? I was told to. Because God told me to. I will forgive and I will be forgiven. She also went on to say that after she was released, and she was released from the prison camp because of a clerical error, she was able to get out and she got out and she went back to her home and she made it through the rest of the war. And at the end of the war, she came up and she met the jail guard who had been there had treated her so, so cruelly. And he said to her, says, I was so cruel and so ruthless and so far away from God. And I thank God that since the war has ended, I have been able to go to God and God has forgiven me. I am now a Christian. But God has sent me here to ask you, I ask you humbly, will you forgive me too? She said she stood there for a moment. She thought about it. And she reached out her hand and says, I forgive you, brother, with all my heart. And she said in that moment, God's love was so intense, it had never been that intense before. But even more so, she said she re realized that the love that she felt was not her love, but was the power of the Holy Spirit. When we forgive someone, we need to know that this is a spiritual uh ramification. This is something that as we forgive, we too can be forgiven. As we do this and show love to one another, as we do something for someone, it's not about us. It's not about our spiritual temperament. It's about Him. And as she was holding His hand, she said she felt a love that was more intense than she had ever felt before. But then the realization comes that that love was not from her, but was the power of the Holy Spirit. She also went on to explain something about forgiveness. She says, you know, I've learned a lot of things about forgiveness. I've had a lot that I had to forgive. But God showed me an illustration and I don't know if you've ever been upstairs in the attic there and saw the belt. We have a rope. And you pull on the rope, and it starts to ring. And you keep pulling on the rope, and the bell keeps ringing. As long as you keep pulling that rope, the bell keeps ringing. Corey Tenboom again gave an example for us with forgiveness. She says, God told me, you got to let go of the rope. That bell will not stop ringing until you let go of the rope. 
if you can't really forgive them and keep your hand on that rope. You don't really forgive them and then keep ringing the bell. That's a lie. And God is the only one who is able to help you with whatever situation you're in. Are there things in your life today that are still dragging you down? Are there things in, in your life today that you can't actually see what God is doing for us? We all know the golden rule, do unto others as they do unto us. So we kind of use it as an excuse. But are we ready to do more? Are we ready to forgive more? Are we ready to love more? I tell you what, I don't care what my kids do. Now this sounds funny because I forgive. I can understand exactly what that father did when he saw his prodigal son coming back. This is an image of God who wants us to be like him. We need to be like God looking down the road to people. Doesn't matter what they did or what they're doing. We're supposed to love them. How many times are you keeping it in your book? 70 times 7 minus what? I don't have minus anything. It just continue, continue, and continue. I'm still looking down the road to people that I've had problems with. I'm still looking for opportunities to people who have done things to me. I don't care. And it's hard to do at times. But are you ready to forgive? He is. Can you hold something against people that God doesn't? Forgiveness is from God. And He wants us to be like Him. He wants us to know that we are called and that we have been forgiven. We've been washed in the blood. The price has been paid at Calvary. Are you ready to receive what he already paid for? Or are you going to make him pay for it yet again? It's not good enough. Yes, it is. He paid it all. He paid it all. When you look at that bill, paid in full. He paid it all. We need to know that song that we sang to begin with, why did I pick it? It says, redeemed how I love to proclaim. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed in His infinite mercy. His child that forever I am. Infinite mercy. Infinite love. Infinite forgiveness. Now what does this mean? It doesn't mean that there will not be judgment. For those, as we see the one who had so much that he was forgiven of, didn't understand it. And he was thrown away. Because he did not receive the wondrous grace that he had and then show it to others. What God did for me, he can do for you. What God does for us, he can do for others. When we look out at people, it's awful easy to get mad at somebody that doesn't have the same perspective that you have, that doesn't have the same, uh, you know, go to the same, they don't play the same, this is it's ridiculous, but they don't play the same kind of music. The church isn't as modern. The church isn't as this, isn't as that. It's not about the church. It's about the presence of the Holy Spirit. Just like Corey Tedman, when I read that, and then she said that the love was not in her, the love was not in that individual, the love was in God. And the power, the intense love that swept over her very being was the power of the Holy Spirit. When we are able to forgive, when we are able to move on, when we are able to see God's working in us, whew, 
There is an intense mercy and grace and love that comes sweeping down upon us. But so many of us are holding back what God wants, what God is doing. I want you to know that his mercy and grace endures forever, forever, forever. We're coming up to, believe it or not, we're going to skip right over Thanksgiving and get to Christmas. I've heard some people who have already put up their Christmas trees because they're so sick of the COVID that they want something positive. I'm sitting there going, wow, that's, we usually wait till at least after Thanksgiving. They say, ah, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to jump right into it. But you see, the thing that I re re remember the most about Christmas is at school, our, our choir, our band, and our orchestra would all get together. And they would do the Hallelujah Chorus. Whew. I don't know if you know about the Hallelujah Chorus. But when it was written, it was written for the, the Danish king. And as it was being played, he stood up. And when the king stands, everybody stands. And they asked, why did you stand up? He says, I was in the presence of the king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The words in that song says, and he shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords. Are we ready to understand who he is and what he has done and what we have received? Because what we have received is so far beyond measure. And what we have received, we need to give to others. Have you received such a wondrous love? Are you ready to say that he is King of kings and Lord of lords in your life? And that when you have received it, Don't worry about, don't, as they say, don't sweat the little things. You know, we have been so, so blessed. I think we need to take some time in prayer. So let's just turn it to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, the Lord God, those who are physically here and those who are hearing this message, I pray that you would speak to their hearts right now and that they would know that they are forgiven. That if they confess their faults, you are faithful and just to forgive them from all unrighteousness. So, Lord God, we do confess our faults. And we thank you, Lord God, that you will endure forever and ever. Lord God, as we leave this place, help us to go out and forgive others as we have been forgiven. To tell them about the wondrous gift that you have shared. That you have been a loving father that brought us back into the fold. Lord God, we love you and we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. The decision that we can make today. Amen. Open up the last song we're going to sing.
pleading, pleading for you and for me. Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for them, Lord God, which we do. You are there waiting for us. Lord God, let us not this time pass, this wonderful moment, the love that you have promised to us, Lord God, that we would be able to receive it and know without a doubt what you have for us this day. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We thank you and praise you. Amen and amen. Thank you. 